Hi, I'm Matthew, a co-founder and engineer at UMI. And today I want to talk to you about what UMI is. So UMI is both a community and an open source platform. And so I want to address each in turn. So first off, let's talk about the UMI community. So, so far, UMI has been seeded with a fantastic academic community. We're working with over 20 academics from more than 13 research institutions. And take a look at this list. It's a fantastic selection of institutions we're working with who are pushing the boundary of ML research already. Now, beyond that, we're also working with the open source community. We want to have public organized research projects. And if you're interested in joining this, please take a look down in the description. I will put our link to our Discord. We're trying to coordinate those efforts. Now, about the platform. So, UMI is also a platform. Um, this differs insofar as this is our GitHub repository. Um, we are fully open sourced and we're an end-to-end -end machine learning platform. We're built on top of PyTorch. We're optimized for a various set of topologies, GPU, CPU, and PU. And we support many modalities. Right now we're text-to-text -text and vision-to-text, um, but we're looking to support more as time goes on. Now we designed UMI also uh, with ease of use in mind and extensibility, and out of the box, we support multiple cloud providers. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Now we get the question often of why did we build UMI? So the whole point of UMI is to make uh, machine learning as easy to use as possible. And so you can focus your time on what really matters. You should be focusing on doing the end-to-end -end machine learning tasks. That's like data set curation, actually training, you know, evaluation and inference, uh, maybe making LLM judges. You shouldn't be spending all your time worrying about which package to install, wrangling environments, things like that. We want you to worry less about the infrastructure and focus more on actually doing the machine learning where it counts most. And so out of the box, this is a community driven effort. We want this to be an end to end support, as I mentioned, for machine learning, doing everything from the very beginning of data curation to training the model and evaluating things. So uh, with that in mind, you can see off the side here, I've uh, put a few of our uh, tools that we support. We support Hugging Face, we're built on PyTorch. Uh, we actually have native VLM for inference, different pieces like that. So we're not trying to compete with these tools. We're trying to embrace them, put them into one ecosystem. Now let's talk about UMI itself. Uh, as I alluded to previously, UMI is a Python package. That's what our open source repo is. And you can easily get started with it today just by pip installing UMI. Now, if you have some cloud credits and maybe want to run UMI on a cloud provider like AWS, Azure, GCP, you can easily install the appropriate package here, you know, pip install UMI from AWS, et cetera. Uh, and that'll do exactly what you need. In addition to that, you can run UMI at a variety of scales. So UMI is great for running locally. You know, you can just say, I want to run UMI train and you specify some configuration. Here I have an example where we're training, you know, uh, Llama 3.2 1B. Now say you have maybe a local cluster, maybe you have one machine that has a few GPUs, or maybe you have access to some extra GCP credits. Well, UMI will scale up to that too. You can run, you know, a distributed torch run locally, or you can even use the UMI launcher, which will, uh, using SkyPilot, launch your job on a cluster on the cloud of your choice, maybe GCP, Azure, AWS. And then we can go one step further. Uh, at UMI, we've actually had the chance to run our jobs on Polaris, a supercomputer uh, that's provided by the US Department of Energy. Now, as you can see here in this config, we are using an UMI launch command to run on 2048 nodes, where each node has four A100s. You can do the math, that's a lot of GPUs. UMI worked at that scale. So. Let's move on and talk about what UMI has to offer. I briefly mentioned our modalities. We're trying to support as much as we can, but right now we support the latest and greatest models. You'll see we just integrated DeepSeq, which came out a few weeks ago at the time of filming this. We also have support for Quen, uh, Phi, um, and all the various Llama flavors, both in text and as well as the vision models supported there too. We also have a lot of standardized data sets. So, you know, I mentioned earlier the machine learning uh, ecosystem and the way that we usually see things go. You wrangle your data sets, you train, you evaluate, uh, you infer, all those pieces. We're gonna start first talking about data set curation in UMI. So in UMI, you can use any popular open source data set you want, and all the data sets are mixed and matched very easily, and it's easy to ingest these data sets. If they are in Hugging Face, you can use them in UMI. Training is just as simple with UMI. We want everything to be very simple. You define a configuration, this configuration file for training, um, and then you can run training just in one line of code. You train using your config. 
Um, all the parameters are fully customizable and you can easily switch between different trainers. I mentioned we supporting Hugging Face before. You can actually choose which specific Hugging Face trainer you want under the hood and we're looking to expand to other trainers in the near future too. Now, say you want to do more than just vanilla training. Um, you can, we support FSDP and DDP as well, which are easily configurable just with one line of code. So say that you have you know, a setup that has multiple GPUs, UMI will easily scale to that. You can also then turn on our telemetry. We have integration with like Wan B uh, and tensor boards. You can get all that ML goodness that you want in one place. Again, only having to install the UMI library. Now, we go a little bit further, especially for those who are GPU constrained. I'm looking at you, r slash local llama. Um, we support actually uh, like LoRa tuning and QLoRa tuning out of the box with just a few lines of code. You can control the hyperparameters and you can see exactly how simple it is to do. Once you're done training, we'll talk about UMI evaluation. UMI evaluation leverages a few open source libraries uh, to do its goodness there. Specifically, we lean pretty heavily right now on LM Harness, but we're looking to expand too as more and more evaluation libraries come out. Um, you can easily create an evaluation config and run it out of the box. And also we have a configuration for using LM as a judge. If you want to maybe do your own data set curation, um, use an LM to vet and uh, improve data sets over time. Take a look at that. Also, we have support for inference. And this is one part that I personally am really excited about is that in UMI, you can run different inference engines. Maybe you want to run things locally, like you're gonna run VLM on a local model you just trained or Llama CPP, that's easy to do. Um, same with SGLang. But then you can also say, oh, may, hey, maybe there's a server hosted somewhere that implements like the OpenAI uh, inference config. Well, great we can actually use that as well using a remote inference engine. You can even go one step further too in UMI, you can compare your model that you ran locally to an existing API. Like maybe you want to you know, query DeepSeek and it's supported by Together uh, AI. You can query Together AI using a remote inference engine there or Parasail or any other provider uh, given that we have a config for them here. And it's very easy to set up given our remote inference support. In addition to online inference, we also support batch inference. Um, I think this speaks for itself. You guys know what batch inference is. If we want to do inference uh, at scale, this is the way to go. Uh, this is simply defined as a few lines in your inference configuration. So as time has gone on, we want to increase our list of recipes. We have support for so many configs, it's too many for me to list here, but know that this is growing over time. And the goal here for UMI is to make sure that all of these recipes are easily reproducible. We want you to be able to train a model in one line on the CLI. Just say UMI train and specify a recipe and you'll get your model out. You can of course you know, modify these uh, parameters as you need, like in this example, maybe adjusting the learning rate. But we wanna keep it simple and reproducible. Also know that when UMI finishes a command like umi train will actually save the configuration that was used then you can share it with others maybe you took one of our recipes and you tweaked some hyperparameters. we want to make sure that's savable so you ran your training that config is saved and then others can reproduce it so that's it for me today um, thanks folks for taking a listen and we'll be back with a few other tutorials on umi but until then thanks and happy tuning